Yo! What's going on lads? What is going on? Today I'm going to be hitting you with a little transfers vid. I know everybody likes to know about what's going on in the transfer market and today I've got some hot ones, some hot topics, some live transfers. I've literally got transfers that have just happened on the TV in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, it's going down today. I've got Sky Sports on in the background just in case I need to change anything in this video. It is that exclusive. It is that up to date. We've actually got a player in this team that has just joined another team and just made a world record debut. I'm not even joking, he joined and within 20 minutes he played. But we're not gonna sit here and waste no more time. We're gonna get stuck straight in to some of these mental transfers and there's gonna be some that if you don't know about already, I'm quite confused myself. Starting with Mr. Joe Hart. Now, this one fully blows my hat off my head. As you can see, I no longer have a hat on my head. For some reason, Mr. Dandruff Boy, England's number one, has fucked off to Italy to play for Torino. Tor what? Joe, what are you doing? I know Dandruff can get deep into the scalp, but I don't know how deep it's got. Maybe it's got into your brain. Why have you gone to play for Torino? Are you stupid? As you can see from this article, Joe Hack claims that he's really excited to test himself in the beautiful Syria. If you're gonna go to the Syria, at least join Juve, or AC Milan, or Inter Milan. It is said to only be a season long loan, but like I just said, I don't understand why he went on loan to Torino. I don't get it. Next up, we're gonna be going with the man, the legend, the boy, Mustafi. Now, Arsene Wenger, you really start to piss us all off. This shouldn't have took this long. And unfortunately, He's one of the only top players that we've signed. And unfortunately, we're not looking like a top team anymore. We lost to Liverpool on the first game of the season. And if we don't sort something out really quick, we're going to get our ass kicked. But like I said, Mustafi looks like he's going to come in to stabilise the defence. And hopefully, we can get some wins behind us. Because at the moment, I don't have any faith. Joining Mustafi in our transfers defence is going to be the Welsh legend, Robson Kahn, who after scoring that goal in the Euros, I think it got a lot of teams talking, a lot of players talking, and it was said there was a Chinese club willing to pay this dude a hundred grand a week. I'm not actually sure what happened with that deal, but apparently he's going to join West Brom because he's a free agent after leaving Reading. And then finally, the big one you've all been waiting for, it is Sideshow Bob, AKA, David Luiz. Bizarrely, this guy once played for Chelsea, as we all know, then moved to PSG for a massive record-breaking fee. Then, for some random reason, Chelsea thought, oh, we fucked up. We want him back. This is exclusive shit. I'm currently watching Sky Sports News. It isn't confirmed yet, but he is in London right now. And apparently, Chelsea are actually willing to pay 32 million pounds. So, they're gonna be winning in this situation. But we're gonna move on to our midfield and this is one that really makes me sad. Jack Wilshire is officially leaving Arsenal. I don't know what the hell has happened to his career over the last four years. It went from up there to down there real quick. And unfortunately now, Arsene Wenger has said his time is up. He doesn't have a place in the Arsenal squad anymore, which blows my mind. Because Wilshire, on his day, when he's not injured, is one of the best midfielders in the world. Yeah, I said it. Also, apparently is on his way to Bournemouth to sign a deal. I'm not sure how much for and how long for, but it looks like we've lost him. And that really has pissed me off. Pattern and Wilshire in our transfers midfield is gonna be Didier and Dong. Now, this guy is breaking records because Sunderland have paid 13.6 million pounds for this dude, and that is the most they have ever paid up front for a player. No pressure, Endong. No pressure at all. Moving across then, we have got the trickster, the skiller, AKA the rapper, Yannick Balassi. This guy has actually got bars. If you go on YouTube and look, he's got bars. Balassi, of course, has signed for Everton on a five-year deal for, let me just, let me just double 25 million pounds. That's big money. But I think we can all agree, Balassi definitely is one of the most skillful, trickiest players in the Premier League on his day. This guy makes up his own skill moves. And then over onto the other side, we have got someone called Jeff Hendrick. I'm not being funny, 
but I've never heard of this dude. And believe it or not, he's just joined Burnley on a club record fee of £10.5 million. Now, for those of you who are just like me and have never ever heard of this guy, this is what he's about. And after watching that, it goes to show maybe this guy really is the real deal. He definitely knows where the back of the net is and he could bring excitement to the Premier League and that is exactly what we all want. Moving on up to our centre attacking mid, we have got Samia the Snake Najri. I will forever never like this guy for leaving us in the fashion that he did. And I guess karma is a bitch because as soon as Najri literally walked out of the Emirates, he was never the same player. For some reason, he just never got off the ground for Man City. And since he's been there, he's been a bench warmer and he's been shit. And I've just found out today that Nasri has joined Seville on a season long loan from Man City. If I was Man City, I would literally just sell this guy. Don't worry about a loan, don't get him back. Because Nasri is a pile of wank. And then finally onto our strike force, we have got Mario Balotelli and Boney. Both extremely black, both extremely big and strong. You wouldn't fuck with them. Damn, with Balotelli now, this guy just never, ever, ever did get off the ground for Liverpool. He doesn't really get off the ground for many teams. I think he had one good game in the World Cup a few years ago. He had one good game for Man City. He had one good game for AC Milan. And for some reason, everybody wanted him. Balotelli, of course, spends all of last season on loan to AC Milan, where he didn't really do anything. I think the best thing I saw him do would score a free kick. Guys, sources have actually said that the nightmare is over for Liverpool because this guy has now gone and joined the League One team Nice, which he probably will go on to do nothing for either. Don't get me wrong, I love Balotelli, but he's just not the best player. And then finally on to one that is gonna blow your mind. Wilfred Bonny, get this right. This dude joined Stoke today. 20 minutes later, he was on the pitch playing for him. 20 minutes, he was on the pit. No, I'm not even joking, I've got proof. That is right, Bonnie actually made a world record debut for Stoke. They bought him, he literally got to the training ground, got changed, and boom, he was on the pitch. Now that is just bizarre. I've always rated this guy since his Swansea days. He's big, he's fast, he's quite skillful, and he definitely knows with the back of the net. So hopefully, for a team like Stoke, where he won't get drowned out by other such quality players, he might be able to bring some flame, he might be able to bring something special and win them games. Either way, it is gonna be an exciting season. The transfer window does close in about three hours. So it's gonna be exciting to see what very last minute deals go through, because every single year, there seems to be a player who joins on the last second of the last day of the transfer window. But there we have it anyway, lads. That is today's video done. If you have enjoyed, please remember to leave it a thumbs up. That'll be great. Like I said, lads, I really hope you've enjoyed, and I will speak to you all next time. Peace. Ben Foster. No, I didn't actually know this guy had a sense of humor until I saw some of the tweets that he's done. Starting with this one back in September 2013 where he sent out a tweet saying, I swear if I catch my son dancing behind a reporter on Sky like these kids, I'm gonna two-foot him. I mean, just imagine being Ben Foster's son. 